Hey guys, um, in this one, in this tutorial, so let me just tell you what we did last time. Last time we created a simple checkpoint blueprint. Um, when we walk over it, it saves our location and then when we reboot the level, um, we'll resume from where the last checkpoint was that we touched. So just to show you if I hit play, um, we're spawning over here in the center of this checkpoint because that was the last checkpoint that we hit. Today what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you how to make a quick little pop-up notification um, that'll pop up in the corner of the screen, a little widget, um, just to notify you when you hit a checkpoint to indicate to the player that the game has been saved and that they're free to go and die and they'll be able to resume from where they left off. So in our content browser, um, in the folder that we called checkpoint, crack that open, right click, go user interface and then widget blueprint and we're going to call this um, save game pop-up, just like that. Um, open that up. And then in palette up here, type in uh, border and then drag that onto the canvas panel down here like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going get to an, get an overlay and then drag the overlay onto the border. And so what the overlay is for is typically a border only lets you have one child. So that could be like a text or an image or something like that with an overlay. Um, an overlay lets you have like text, image, blah, blah, blah. You can put whatever you want. Um, all attached to the overlay so it just lets you have more stuff superimposed on the border so let's just change the position of the border to somewhere nice um, I reckon the bottom right of the screen is probably a good spot for a notification so I click on anchors click on this one in the bottom right like that and then change the position X and position Y to 0 and 0 and what that's going to do is that's going to change the position of this to 0 and 0 from that anchor point so it'll be dead on the anchor point and now if you change the alignment to 1 and 1, it should anchor it to the other corner of the box, just like that. And now if we change the position X to say negative 50 and negative um, 50 like that, the right hand bottom corner of the box is going to be 50 pixels um, up and back from the corner, just like that. Now we can change the size, so we might make the box maybe 250 on the X and maybe 150 on the Y. So if you're looking at the screen like that, maybe a little bit wider, we might go 350 on the X. Or maybe even 400 and then 200. Yeah, that looks good to me. Okay, so let's change the color. I don't like the white. Let's make it black. Um, and maybe change the alpha to 0 0.75 like that. Okay, and that was the wrong one. That's content color. We don't want to change that. Let's leave that. Um, go to appearance and then brush color, I think is the one we want. So change that to black and then 0 0.75 is the opacity. Cool. And now if you go back to your palette and then type in text, click on text and then drag that onto the overlay like this. Um, and actually what we want something else. We want a scale box. And then we're going to put that onto the overlay and then put the text box attached to the scale box like that. So the reason that we want the scale box is we want to make this text fill up the entire size of this box. And the best way to do that is just to scale it. So if you grab scale box and that's set to scale to fit. Now what we want to do is we want to set this box to fill its parent just like that. So as you can see that's already scaled beautifully. And if we add some padding, maybe like 50, now it's not quite flush with the edges. It's a little bit further in. So maybe 25 just like that. Just so it's got some room around the edges. Um, now with this one, with the text, change that so it's aligned in the center and vertical aligned in the center as well. So now it's dead in the middle of the box, just like that. And then change the text to game saved, just like that. So that'll be nice. That's going to pop up in the corner of the screen um, when we save the game. So let's add a little a fancy animation to it. So if you click on border up here, that's the entire thing. Um, and then go down to animation and then type in uh, slide up is what we're going to call it. So click on that, click timeline here, and then go add track to border. And then if you click on your little border track, click add track down here, and then transform. Um, expand the drop down for the transform. So this is the first frame, and then at um, one second, what we're going to do is we're just going to change the transform, the translation. There we go. And we're just going to slide the Y down like that so it's off the screen just like that um, and then compile and save now this is actually sliding down so I'm just going to change the name of this so I don't get confused 
slide down like that. Okay, and if we run through this, you can see that it's sliding just like that as you move the timeline back and forwards. So that's beautiful. Um, now go into the event graph. What we'll do is we'll just delete all of this here, grab your animation, slide down, drag that in holding control to drop it, and then drag off and say play animation. Um, now add a custom event, and this custom event is going to be called um, slide, no, let's call it display save notification, just like that. And we're going to call this from the checkpoint blueprint over here once we've set it all up. Okay, so display save notification, what that's going to do, um, it's going to play the animation uh, the slide down animation, but we don't want to slide it down, we want to slide it up. So we're going to go reverse to begin with, like that. Um, then we'll have a delay of, say, however long we want it to be visible for. Maybe we want, it, we want it to be visible for like six seconds. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy this whole animation node. And this time we're just going to have it slide down, so forward. We're going to have the play mode set to forward, just like that. Um, and what we could also do is if we move all of this over like that, we could also have a little sound. So we'll say spawn sound 2D, 2D for UI sound, so it has no attenuation. And then I've got a little little alert sound like that that's um pretty nice. Um, what else have we got? Pick up. That's nice. Okay, I'll put a link to that in the description. You can use that in whatever games you want. That's something that I've just made in one of my audio programs. It's a nice little save sound. Okay. Um, so that'll play. The animation will play. It'll wait six seconds, and then the animation will um, go back the other way. And then what we might do is we might just say, remove from parent. So the widget will just destroy itself after it um, finishes sliding down. So before we do that, though, let's add delay. And we'll have that set to one second, because this animation took one second. We'll wait one second for it to complete, and then the widget will destroy itself. Okay, um, that should be all good. So if we go into our checkpoint blueprint, um, this is the one that we set up in the last video. So we've got a whole save game thing like this. Um, that's doing its thing. Let's just delete this print string off the end. We won't need that anymore. So I'm just going to highlight all of this from does save game exist all the way to save game to slot. And I'm just going to collapse that to a node and then just call that um, update saved checkpoint. Just like that. And then drag that all the way over like this. So now that's just a tiny little thing that contains this absolute monstrosity. And then I'm just going to hook that up to the output like that just to keep it neat and tidy. Because we know that that works, that's done. We can fold that away as a node and forget about it. So now, off of this, um, what we're going to do is after we've saved the game, is we're going to say create widget, and the widget we're going to create is our save game pop-up, and then off of the return value, we're going to say display save notification. So that's going to call that event that we just made here like that. So we're going to display that notification, and we're also going to add to viewport. We're going to add the widget to the viewport like that. Um, with any luck, that should that should work. So let's just give that a test beautiful. So we spawned in and the second we overlapped it, the save game notifications popped up and it's disappeared. So now if we walk over it, beautiful. Saved. Game saved. And if I go back over to this one, nice. And what happens if I walk over it again while it's already there? We get a second one. <laughs> that's alright. Doesn't really matter. That's fine. Um, alright guys, I might leave that one there. Um, let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you in the next video.